Uh, on the subject of Gandhi, I remember at the time, um, as when any film of a historic figure comes out, people who knew more than the people making the film were raising points about this being left out and that. And so on. But there was a point that was intriguing, and I never heard the details of it, which was they overlooked certain unpalatable things about Gandhi's sex life. Now, eager for details of that, I never got any. Can you fill me in on this, You're or is this a total waste of You're time? You're not going to get any now, either. No, I no, just... No, definitely not. Oh. Come on, I did the Gandhi junket seven years ago. This is deja vu. Oh, really? Oh, don't. Where am I going to go to get the answer to this? Is it that you don't want to talk about it? Yeah, fair enough. I think you're within your rights. <laughs> the fact that I'm going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> well, let, uh, let's move on from that, shall we? Good. <laughs> I, I didn't realize it was going to have such, a, such an effect. And now that, effect. I got to tell you that the, the look you're giving me now is as impressive as an intense as that you it's get water, through on the screen. It's that dash of orange juice. It's, you know, works wonders. Well, uh, in hopes that we can still be friends, I'll move on. You bet. About your Oscar, there are actors who make a point of using it as a doorstop. Remember, I haven't met these people. They are an invention. You know, I haven't met a single actor. Mine is in the middle of my library, um, and people, I say, they say, Where, which bathroom can I use? The one upstairs. You have to walk across the library, and I. Oh, there's an Oscar in here. Yes, that's right. You found it. Yeah, I've just fallen over it. Well, you're, you're making the other patrons of the Jockey Club, club laugh here. Uh, by the way, this is a very nice setting. We were going to pretend it was your house, but I gather this is my Norfolk not quite, estate. Yeah, not quite. Yes. Uh, so if I if I were to, if I were to come to your Norfolk estate, despite my curiosity about Gandhi's sex life, which I will always regret having mentioned in well, front of we you, we can talk about it quietly uh, over a nice glass of wine. All right, I, I could um, I, I couldn't miss the Oscar. I gather. No, you couldn't. You couldn't miss the Oscar. The What's the exact Bell, setting the of it? Pardon? The exact setting for it. Uh, it's on a on a shelf um, uh, with a with a discreet um, 120 watt spot, <laughs> which is partly burnt the wall behind it. An eternal light. Yeah. 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 No, but you do hear stories. You're right. I, you don't never find out who I've they never, are. But honestly, Dick, I have never met these people who are so blasé and casual about their awards. It doesn't seem to me to be anything to do with the actor's temperament. We live for uh -huh. applause. If you don't live for applause, I think you've got that circuit missing. Well, of course, actor. it's another role to assume, isn't it, to say, well, I don't give a damn about stuff like that. That's why I'm using my two Oscars as and irons in the fireplace right. or something. Right. Yeah. What do they weigh, by the way? They're they, heavy. They, they're, they're pretty heavy. I don't know what they'd weigh in pounds, but I mean, they'd be good for weight training. If I have two, you see, I could, I could really work out properly, but with the one, it's rather difficult. So I have to get the other one to balance out. Has one's, do one's a, ever been used work. as a murder weapon? Probably, yes. Why no one good story. Of that? Good story there. Yeah. Now, when you beat someone out, no one ever wins anything. I thought you said that. beat someone up then. No, no, I was going to say, when, when you win an Oscar, of course, you immediately define, uh, what is it, four other people as losers. What happens when well, you meet those people afterwards? Those uh, four losers that you're talking about are Dustin Hoffman, uh, Jack Lemmon, Peter O'Toole, and Paul Newman. Well-known losers. Well-known, well-known for their rather poor performances <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad you're willing to be so frank. <laughs> It's very refreshing. Dustin, uh, I've, met, I've met all of them um, in, 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 on various occasions. After the fact? Or, or After the and fact before. and yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder if there's time in the quick time we have left to tell about Dustin Hoffman's coming backstage. Was it to see you? I was clued into this. Oh, after my one-man Edmund Keane mm -hmm. show, which I did in, uh, in London. Yeah. And he came backstage, burst into my dressing room and hugged me. And he said, um, I'm going to beat you, you bastard. With some, with some performance or something on stage, I'm going to beat you, you bastard. To this day, do you wonder if he was joking? Dustin Hoffman, of course, is Welsh, as you noticed from my <laughs> brilliant impersonation. <laughs> from the Welsh hills. I can name the hill, actually. I, and Robert? the fact that he's covered it up all these years and that you exposed it here yeah. is really, yeah. really fine. Are there any dialects you can't do that you envy? Um, I can't, I can't do Japanese. No? No. You speak Japanese, don't you? Uh, well, you tell Japanese jokes. I, I, I speak me. enough Japanese to give the impression to Japanese that I speak to enough baffle to, un them. to unsettle them. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we won't have time right now. We'll be right back. <laughs>